Hey there, everybody. It's Mark Kep with CampgroundViews.com, and I'm here with Stephen from Tent Masters. We're going to talk about luxury tents, glamping, and all that fun stuff. So, Stephen, thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you for having me, Mark. So, give us some background on uh, Tent Masters and you know how you're in the industry and what your focus is. So, Tent Masters is essentially the North American distributor for Luke's and Tent, and um, we operate all the way from Panama up to Canada and. Luke's and Tenton, um, as pictured here, uh, we sell luxury glamping tents based out of the Netherlands and Holland. And they ship worldwide. They're in 50 countries and counting. We have 1,021 campsites worldwide with our product. And we're trying to really take off in North America. This is something that's huge in Europe. It's popular in Asia. It's really just now gaining traction in North America. Um, our philosophy is bringing you closer to nature without sacrificing the amenities of a hotel. Um, some of our tents, as you can see here, they have uh, hot tubs, uh, European rain showers, fully equipped bathrooms, kitchens. Um, these aren't your average day, every, everyday tents. Um, we have a variety of different models. Um, this is a, it's not camping, it's, it's glamping. And it's something that's really just now starting to take off. Um, a couple of years ago, I've never personally heard the term glamping. Now, I mean, you see it in Toyota commercials, State Farm commercials. Um, it's really something that's starting to gain a lot of traction. Um, what do you define? That's actually a big thing for me is, is the word glamping, because I, I feel like it's not, it's not definitive enough to define it. Because like some people can throw out a tent in the backyard, and as your product is a demonstration here, this could be glamping too, right? So there's this wide variety. So how would you define glamping? Glamping is an extraordinarily broad term, and that's Part of the beauty of it. Um, for instance, there's uh, many other manufacturers who uh, they sell their tents um, and they label them as glamping tents. Um, they're more um, outdoorsy. They might have a wood stove in them. Um, the biggest part for us is having a platform, is having your, your feet off the ground and not in the dirt. Um, we like to ditch the soggy bed rolls, um, the creepy crawlies, and all that, and uh, just provide our guests with more of a uh, luxury feel. But the term glamping itself um, can mean many things. Um, it's different for everybody. It's a very broad term. It's something that's really uh, remarkable about it. Um, you can have anything from a, a, a teepee and you can call that glamping anywhere to where, uh, as you saw a second ago, our uh, glamping lodge, which is a two-story model and a tent, which is really hard to call a tent sometimes, but um, it really depends. Um, everybody's looking for something different. Um, whether you want to pitch a tent in your backyard and go camping, or if you want to you know, have something a little bit more comfortable, um, tailored towards uh, people who prefer their mattresses or hot water, and, you know, showers, um, something we certainly offer, but. You know, I walked through, I was at the glamping summit there in Denver and I walked through, you had your, your display set up with a unit that looks very similar to that, where it was, it was, I mean, it wasn't a tent, it was, it was a pretty fancy uh, unit. And so there, the, it was a huge difference between your product and the other products. And, and I'm not saying the other products are, are negative, just a difference, right? And so the difference I noticed was the wood interiors. It felt like, you know, it was more park model, more hotel uh, with like an outside canvas exterior. And, and is that really the best way to describe them? In a sense, uh, yes, sir. Um, our tents are derived from the African safari tent. Um, in fact, our platform itself is actually uh, made up of Zobi hardwood pegs. And these are something you hammer into the ground and you actually build your uh, deck, your platform around it. Um, you'll cut off the excess, lay your tongue and groove. And then the tent itself is all, um, the products that we use is a hundred millimeter um, Scandinavian pine pressure treated poles, um, galvanized steel brackets. Uh, the canvas itself is a military grade uh, Dutch uh, tankate fabric. It's a mold mildew resistant. It's also fire retardant, which is very, very important for a tensile structure. Um, but in terms of our tents being a little different, it's, it's a, it is, it's a little unique spin. Um, like I said, we try to bring you closer to uh, nature without uh, sacrificing the amenities of a hotel. Um, but everybody brings something different to the table, which is what I love about this industry. Um, everybody uh, offers a lot of different unique products. Um, it all depends about what the customer is interested in. Um, you know, maybe this is a little too fancy for someone's taste, and that's perfectly fine. It's not for everybody, but it's for a lot of people, and it's definitely something that we're seeing uh, a lot of growth, especially in North America. Um, Talk about that a little bit. So you're, you're obviously on this side of the business, the glamping side of the business. What type of growth are you seeing, and, and, and what type of projects are you seeing coming your way? Um, across the United States, all over. Um, we're doing projects um, here locally in Tennessee, where I'm located. Um, we're on the West Coast. Um, 
sold units in Florida. We're doing a very large resort for a KOA up in Bar Harbor, Maine right now. Um, they're hoping to have that open by spring. So those um, are just, your units in, in, on that property? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It'll be a 60 okay. unit resort up in Bar Harbor, Maine. It's going to be uh, actually called Terramore. It's a KOA uh, owned, uh, it's their own little name brand. Um, but they got their own spin on it. It's our tents. It's their own furniture kind of They've in, introduced their own taste into it, kind of made, made it their unique product, which is something that we also offer. Um, of course, as you see here, we offer complete turnkey packages. Um, we can also sell the tent itself as a, a blank canvas, per se, and uh, you can completely decorate it yourself. But in terms of projects, um, we're, uh, we're in talks all over uh, Central America, the Caribbean. Um, I just got back from Vancouver uh, this past week, um, trying to get really introduced into the Canadian markets. Um, lots of... Uh, open land up there. I think there's going to be a very uh, large uh, untapped market up there that we really hope to uh, introduce our products into. Um, this is something that if you go to Europe, there's, it's huge. It's everywhere. I mean, you go all over in all sorts of different countries, you'll see glam sites. And I mean, really, really remarkable areas. And Asia, it's really starting to pick off. Um, it's big in Australia, New Zealand. We're really just now, we're a little behind over here in North America. We're really just now starting to take off. Um, Full well, that goes into my next question. What are you seeing that the, obviously the, the European Asian consumer is different because they typically, they didn't camp, right? You know, well, maybe Europe did. They had, they had campers, but if, especially Asia didn't really camp uh, previously as, as a culture. Um, in the U.S., we had camping. You know, people have camped for a long time in RVs and tents and so forth. Are you seeing a difference in the consumer that's demanding these type of, or not just demanding, but using these type of accommodations? Or is it that same consumer just switching over to these? Well, it's a little bit of both. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of cultural uh, variations that uh, are getting introduced to this. It's something that's more luxury oriented, and especially popular in a lot of Asian communities. Um, the biggest one right now, though, is uh, and I'm guilty of it because um, I'm one of them is uh, the millennial generation, and uh, we're uh, we're a little uh, we require more uh, tailored, I guess. Uh, um, accommodations in a way. Um, we like our Wi-Fi, we like our electricity, our hot water. Um, this is very popular with millennials. And millennials, um, they love to spend money on experiences. And experiences is something that's very important. Um, we're trying to offer our guests a very unique experience. Um, I've stayed in hotels all over the country, and I'll tell you right now, 20, 30 years from the road, um, down the road, I won't remember that. But if I stay in one of these 20, 30 years down the road, you bet I'll remember that. This was just such a unique experience. It's just a novelty. It's something that uh, you really can't find anywhere else. Yeah, that's a really good point. So now let's go down to the units themselves. So you've got running water and so forth. How do, what's the impact for the, the park when, if they're installing one of these units? Do they have to uh, pull permits on these? How are they, what are they permitted as? And you know, what's the actual manufacturing process to get one of these placed on a property? Um, that's a very good question. Um, the permitting is entirely dependent on the municipality. Um, our units are, they're tents, they're temporary non-permanent structures. It's something we really try to emphasize on. Um, for instance, um, our Bar Harbor project, they're completely on skids. Um, you know, these are full length timbers on a cat block, concrete blocks, and uh, they are temporary structures. Um, you know, some units, I've, I dealt with a customer in uh, Montana who as soon as he puts a bathroom in it, it's a permanent structure. So it really varies. Um, as far as uh, what the, the leeway is and uh, ordering the product and getting it to your resort, um, typically about six to eight weeks. They're manufactured in the Netherlands. This is a, they ship worldwide out of the Port of Rotterdam. Um, of course, we facilitate all sales in North America. While we are beginning to keep stock here in Tennessee, it's relatively um, for shorter orders, smaller orders. Um, if you were ordering, excuse me, large amounts of units, um, about, about six to eight weeks. Um, Right now we're in our busy season. It's probably about eight to ten weeks, but um, that's about it for that. Um, but permanent. What is this? This demo that we're watching here is this in the U.S. or is this in the Netherlands? This is our uh, manufacturer, Lucitat, and this is their showroom in the Netherlands. Okay. Um, and this is open for people to visit and actually go in and see. Um, you can really get a hands-on experience. And we've had many of our customers do this. Um, I'm located in Sevierville, Tennessee, and we have our showroom um, where I'm at. And we have six of our tents that are actually outside. Um, and oh, we, okay. we offer our customers the ability to come here, fly in. Um, we actually have three resorts in the area that have our products that uh, we work in with um, to, for instance, if I have a customer um, in California that wants to fly in, they can rent out a tent and stay in it at one of these resorts and then come to our showroom. 
it kind of um, to get their feet wet, you know, better life. Very smart. Very smart. Yeah, I'm sure we have some viewers that are on the West Coast to be willing to install your tents, you know, with a, a similar type of deal and let other people come <laughs> if they can get a deal on them. So when you're looking at glamping, where do you think you see things going over the next five, 10 years in the U.S.? Well, we've seen a big trend in um, a lot of campgrounds. They'll have uh, existing tent sites, pitch your own tent sites, and they might not have the turnover that they really ideally want. So a lot of our customers will actually be buying our smaller units to put in these tent sites because um, there's just such a high turnover with these, you know, they'll make use of it. Um, a lot of existing um, cabins that uh, campgrounds may have had for 30, 40 years, you might be bought car, you know. Um, this is something that you can make a very small investment on. You can put it up very quickly and see an immediate return on your investment. Right now, in my opinion, I think this is the best uh, return on investment in the accommodations and hospitality industry right now in the United States. Um, yeah, yeah, I, the, the numbers prove that it's been really crazy on it. And what is the price point of your, your tents? Where do they, you know, what's the general range for people to consider? Um, our smallest unit, which is an 8x10, um, it starts at about fully furnished with the platform, the furniture, the mattresses, um, about 7,600 US dollars. Most of our tents, um, we have several different models. Um, they all come in several different sizes, um, vary about 20 to 40,000 range, and that is fully equipped with the platforms, the furniture, the tent, um, the whole nine yards. Now, of course, if you were just to buy the tent itself um, with no furniture, the platform, nothing else, I'm gonna be much cheaper. Um, typically around 10 to 15,000, depending on the model and size, of course. But um, for the most part, they're all under um, 50,000, um, except a couple of our uh, specialty units, which uh, I can get into a little bit later, but uh, they range um, anywhere in size from 2,600 square feet to 3,300 square feet. Um, those are our flagship units. And what were those, what do those look like? What do they do? Are they just bigger or fancier? Um, they're, uh, they're like five-star camping is what we like to call them. Um, you actually scroll down, um, we have the uh, the Gotland tent and the, the Romanov, which the Romanov is actually going to be released a uh, quarter to two this year, we hope. Um, and we don't have a lot of information on it right now. We're actually putting one up in Holland here uh, next week, actually. And it's something we're really excited to see. Um, that is 3,300 square feet. It's multiple stories. got a full uh, wood-fired hot tub in it. Um, of course, there's the floor plan right there, multiple bedrooms. It's uh, – <laughs> This wow. is a five-star glamping is what we call it. Um, What's the price point on something like that? Um, that right now, I actually do not have the information on. Like I said, it should be released in quarter two of this year. So um, I'm still gathering um, as we go. But hopefully uh, here in a couple months, I'll be able to answer that question. Man, I mean, that's something you could live in. I mean, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> it's uh, it, They get hard to call tents sometimes. And yeah. <laughs> and this and, is the, the family house, like kind of a, a shared space underneath it. This is awesome. All right, so if people want to get more information from you on, on the product, um, they can go to ustentmasters.com or email call. How else can they reach you? Um, if you go to the contact box, um, you can fill out a contact form box on our website. You can also email sales at tentmasters.com. Um, you can also call our number, which is 888-988-TENT, T-E-N-T, and um, we, will, we will get back to you within 24 hours. Um, but you can also um, email our manufacturer, of course, and they'll get back to us. Um, uh, we operate, uh, Lutz and Tenton operates uh, worldwide, uh, 50 countries. Um, so if you have viewers that are outside the United States, for instance, or maybe even um, in Europe or Asia, um, that's the best route to take. So the, the market's here. You're seeing the demand. You're seeing that it's, it's got some growth. If a park owner is considering getting into this type of accommodation for their park, is this something that they need to have the cash up front to? Or are they able to finance this? How do, how do they get these units into their location? Currently, we're working on a, a variety of different options. Um, most often, you'll make a down payment, anywhere from 30 to 50 percent, depending on the order. Um, of course, we'll process that. That's just to get it started. Um, then, of course, it has to be loaded onto a vessel and arrive in the U.S. port. Then we usually require a remainder. Um, we are currently looking into financing options right now. Um, and that's something that's a little tricky for some of these kind of units, but um, it's, hope, it's something we hope to uh, cross very soon. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to offer that. What do you, I mean, cause as you know, we're watching this, we're seeing these units here and these, these really kind of cross that line a little bit. I know they're temporary and they can be moved really quickly, but you know, when we're talking $50,000 for something like this or, or even 20,000, you know, and that price point, 
as you know, the, the problem with financing is somebody's not going to loan money on something that can just pick up and leave tomorrow, right? And so where do you see glamping going as an industry, you know, especially on your side as the manufacturer? Do you see there some sort of, you know, standards and being put into place as to what defines it, you know, kind of like the RV industry, they define RVs as, you know, temporary structures for non-permanent living, right? Um, or you see that happening in the glamping space too? Um, it's really hard to tell um, at this point. Um, like I said, a lot of that permitting uh, is entirely dependent on the municipality, different areas, different countries that I deal with see it differently. Um, glamping as a whole though, it's a, as I mentioned earlier, it's a very broad term. It's one of the beauties in it. It's, uh, it's art in a way. Um, I mean, you can, this is something that can be a do it yourself. You can set up canvas, you can build your own tensile structure and set it up on a platform and Airbnb is your best friend. Um, yeah. You can purchase one of our units, you know, set it up as a kit. Um, it's a little easier, I think. Um, but there's so many different options for you. Um, glamping as a whole, I think, is absolutely going to take off, um, of course. Um, it's just one of those things that there's just such a novelty around. It's just a, it's an experience. It's all about the experience. Um, and the millennial generation, my generation, um, we love experience. We love making memories. We love um, experiencing something completely unique that we can't find just anywhere. Um, like I said before, um, I've stayed in hotels all over the country. I remember very few of them, you know, there's nothing that really sticks out. This is all about sticking out. It's all about providing you with something that um, you'll be able to cherish um, with friends, family, or even alone. Very cool. Steven, I thank you for joining us here today. Um, if you want to get any more information, it's us tentmasters.com. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mark.